I will now invite National Chief Archibald for her closing remarks. So thank you very, very much to you, National Chief. <laughs> I will keep this uh, very brief. Um, I wanted to uh, just say a lot of thank yous to everybody. Um, first and foremost, miigwech to the three nations, Silwatooth, um, Musqueam and Squamish, who have allowed us to do our work and to be guests in their lands. Um, I always have a special place in my heart for chiefs who hang in there right to the end. So I want to acknowledge all of you who have stayed right to the very end. I also want to say miigwech to all of my relations, <clears throat> all my brothers and sisters, to the grassroots organizers and supporters and matriarchal leadership whose voices were heard this week from coast to coast to coast. Uh, thank you to my National Chief Office staff, the AFN Secretariat staff, to the Resolutions Committee. I also wanted to echo Chief Lance Heyman's apology. Uh, you know, there was a, a moment where staff were hurt and I was told about it later. And I wanted you to know as staff that you do great work and I think that people need to know that. Um, <clears throat> but I also wanted to say, <clears throat> excuse me, miigwech to the regional chiefs, to all their regional staff. Uh, chiefs, I wanna thank all of you for the work we did together. Uh, miigwech for your time and energy as always. And I especially wanna thank our co-chairs uh, this was, yeah, give them a round of applause. <laughs> this was likely one of the most difficult meetings in recent history, and uh, they let us through it. They got us through it, so miigwech. Um, also, I want to thank all of the guests who joined us, uh, recent ones, and especially those who bared their souls to us and shared their pain with us so that we could hold them in our hearts. But let me say again, I'm uh, really, uh, it's so good to close this meeting <clears throat> as your duly elected national chief. Um, I do recognize as the first woman that I walk with a very different style and a different type of leadership than in the past. But I want to assure you, and I've said this to many of you, I am built for this moment. And I've always said, and when everybody came up to me and asked me, how am I doing? I always said, I'm doing well considering all things. Um, but in the same spirit, earlier today, Jagmeet was uh, in a meeting with us and he taught me an important uh, expression that his mother taught him, which is chardikala, uh, which means rising spirits in the face of difficulty. And that, that's what I'm feeling right now and I will feel that as I walk through these, um, this whole term. But as I wanted to stay, say one more time, I've been at this for 33 years. I'm built for this moment, and I've always stood for transparency, accountability, and truth. And what we heard in this assembly is that we all stand for accountability, transparency, and truth. And while not all chiefs may agree on that path forward of how we will get there, I know that we will get there by working together. So now the real work begins. Uh, as Chief Copene said, our First Nations are watching. Certainly, Rosalie Labellois, the youth co-chair, was watching us Tuesday when leadership in this room uh, failed to show up. Some of us were here um, for Frank Young and the Red Earth Cree Nation, and I was alone on the stage standing with the family, and then a few RCs came back in. Um, and stood on the stage as well. But her message was not lost on me. We need to get our house in order. Um, Ashley and Samantha are walking around right now. They're gonna hand you out some orange shirt pins as a reminder of our children who were lost in those institutions of assimilation and genocide. And these orange pins are a symbol of hope. And that's what we must leave this assembly with, is a hope in our heart that we are on the right path. So I want you to know again, I am relentless in my pursuit of truth, and let me assure you that the struggle for transparency and accountability is an honorable and worthy cause. I know that this kind of 
relentless pursuit is what we need. Our little ones need it. Our families need it. Our children need it. So let me assure you, I am fully committed to the healing path forward. And I know that 100% approval in politics is impossible. But it's not why I'm standing with you today. I'm standing here because you put me here. You want to change. Change is scary for some people, but we must gather our courage and embrace one another and help each other stand up when one of us falls. There's a saying, fall down seven times, get up eight. I'll continue to persevere so that the next generation of sisters and daughters can thrive as we move on this healing path forward. It's not been easy for these last two months. It's been very difficult for me. But as I said, I'm built for this moment. And these 33 years have prepared me for this moment to keep walking forward no matter what. So we have come to this crossroads in our history and we must be aware that intergenerational trauma is what underlies all of this colonial and lateral violence. And we have a responsibility as leaders to break those barriers down to eliminate violence and ultimately create safe spaces for all of us and our most vulnerable. So how do we guarantee a space where our youth are heard, where women are heard, and where the voiceless are heard? Well, let's change our procedures for one thing, to ensure we are heard longer than just three minutes. That's a chief complaint that I heard throughout this assembly. But, but as we move forward in this evolutionary, positive, transformational road, it began here. You were all a part of a historical moment. You drove this historical moment. And at the heart of AFN is you and your communities. You have asserted yourselves, Chiefs. You are going to drive the agenda. You have asked for change, and together we will clean and heal the AFN. Together we will eventually build a new corporation based on our values, our cultures, our beliefs, our seven sacred teachings. And I'd like to repeat, that we, we will carry the protocols of living close to the land and our sacred laws as the foundation of the relationship we have with all of creation. So as people, we've been given that responsibility by the creator, our natural laws. These laws are not corporate laws. These are our highest laws. These laws are not federal laws. These laws are not colonial laws. These were the laws given to us by the Creator. So ultimately, my vision as a leader, and I heard also your vision, is that we are self-determining, self-reliant, self and that we have regained our proper place across Turtle Island. And I echo Kilsalem's vision for the AFN as being the most effective advocacy organization in the world, is what he said. So I want you to, I want to end this by telling you what I started to tell you in my, my speech on the first day. I want you to know that I love you, that I love every single one of you in this room, and even those that have left this room to travel home. I love every single person in your community. I care about what happens to you. I care about what happens to every single person in your community. So I have been given a mandate to bring love and healing forward. And this is our opportunity to lead with healing, to lead with love, to lead with truth. And that love is not the romantic love that we see in movies. It is the love that says, I want the best for you. I want the best for your children. I want the best for the future. So in transparency, accountability, and truth, we're going to walk the healing path forward. Nenanaskamun gesakitan, nenanaskamun in my dialect means I am grateful, I am thankful, I thank you, and gesakitan means I love you.
Thank you very much, National Chief, for this 